Give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Hello and welcome. I'm John, priest of St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Camillus, New York, and this is For All the Saints, our weekly exploration of the lives of the holy women and holy men honored by the Episcopal Church. This week, we remember Richard Hooker, scholar, priest, reformer. Let us pray. O God of truth and peace, who didst raise up thy servant Richard Hooker in a day of bitter controversy, to defend with sound reasoning and great charity the Catholic and Reformed religion. Grant that we may maintain that middle way, not as a compromise for the sake of peace, but as a comprehension for the sake of truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading comes from 1 Corinthians. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is, it with, that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's spirit, for they are foolishness to them, and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, the word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Jesus said, as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. The Gospel of the Lord. If you've heard or said that the foundations of the Anglican tradition are like a three-legged stool, equally informed by scripture, tradition, and reason, then you have invoked the work of Richard Hooker. Hooker was born in March of 1554 in the city of Exeter in the southwest portion of England known as Devon. His family was not a noble one, nor particularly wealthy, but they were successful and they did have good connections. Hooker was able to attend the local grammar school, and with the assistance of his uncle John, who served in the city government, and his connection to the Bishop of Salisbury, John Jewell, Richard was able to secure admission to Corpus Christi College, Oxford, where he eventually became a fellow. 
Hooker chose an ecclesial career and was ordained a priest in 1579 by the Bishop of London, Edwin Sandys, who later became the Archbishop of York. His first church position came two years later when he was named a priest to St. Paul's Cathedral in London, where he became known for his preaching. It was in this position that Hooker first came into conflict with the then rising Puritan faction within the church and their strict Calvinist theology and interpretations. This conflict would frame his career and theology and would later result in his seminal work on the laws of ecclesiastical polity. It was also during this time that Hooker met and married Jean Churchman, the daughter of his landlord, John Churchman, who was an important merchant in the city of London, who would later become an invaluable ally and supporter of Hooker and his work. In 1585, Hooker was named Master of the Temple, a royal chapel by Queen Elizabeth I. It was while he held this position that he began writing on the laws of ecclesiastical polity. He left his position at Temple Church in 1591 to take up a parish in Salisbury, which he apparently gave little attention to while he finished his massive work while residing primarily in the city of London, the first of half of which was published in 1593. In 1595, he left Salisbury to take up a position as rector of a parish in Kent, and it was there he was able to finish the second half of his great work, publishing it in 1595. Sadly, Hooker didn't live much longer after that, dying on November 3rd of 1600, leaving behind his widow and four daughters. He was buried in the chancel of the church in Bishopsburn, and his will gave money to build a new pulpit, which is still in use. His great work on the laws of ecclesiastical polity formed the foundation from which the 17th century Anglican divines forged our modern understanding of the Anglican tradition as a via media, which seeks to keep what was good from our Catholic traditions and useful while also drawing inspiration from the insights of the Protestant Reformation. His work was also an inspiration to John Locke, the great philosopher whose ideas gave form to the Enlightenment. Let us pray. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And now I invite you to join with me in saying the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised for these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see. A light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh -huh.